Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I am an independent contractor and trainer. In this episode, I'm going to just slightly revisit some of these things that I've talked about with stateful lambdas before and show one more thing that I'm guessing most people haven't ever considered doing. And again, this is not one of those things that falls into a best practice kind of video. It's just something that's fun to do. So in the past, we've made our stateful lambdas that go something like this. So we can see here that zero is being returned from main with this XOR EIX EIX. Let's get this font just a little bit bigger. Okay, so if we call L multiple times, then we're going to see that we've got two being returned from main, both two being moved into the EIX register. Now, something that we didn't ever consider doing is uh, thinking about the fact that, well, lambdas have object lifetime, and this episode goes out to the students in my Understanding Object Lifetime in C++ class that I had two weeks ago. So let's just consider what we want to do to manipulate the lifetime of objects here. So we've got our vel, and because we, we wanted to change it, we had to declare this lambda mutable. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of this. And instead, why not just create vel as a static variable? So now we've got a static auto integer, and we increment it each time L is called, and we can see that we're still getting two returned from our main with this move uh, two into EIX. And of course, this suffers from the problem that we can't actually copy this anymore. So if we wanted to do auto L2 equals L, so now we've made a copy of the lambda, but they are still going to share the same static variable. So if I call L2, I'm still going to be incrementing the value that's returned, and we see 4 is being returned from EAX here. And this, you know, I mean, this is just a weird thing to be doing in the first place. But we also have the problem that it's not thread safe if we really cared. So if we wanted to pass this lambda into um, a future, for example, And we're going to have to adjust our compile flag. So we add pthread here. Now this is going to compile. And we should, well, see an awful lot more output because we just instantiated a thread. So let's do, wow. OK. Um, that's with full optimizations turned on. And we get a truncation error from Compile Explorer. So Let's do this instead and send this out to see out. So to actually see the output of this one, we're going to move back over to our console. And as you can see here, we are outputting the value from L to the console. We can prove to ourselves that this is actually running in a separate thread by setting the standard launch async flag, as I have done here, which will force it to actually run in a separate thread. And we're expecting the value 4, 5, that is, to be printed, because the static variable here is going to be shared across the main and the subthread. And let's try commenting this out, the actual force get here, and see if we can force a race condition. And we have. We've shown that we can get a race condition here. So the question is, how do, can we get this magnificent shared state but thread safe stateful lambda that we've always wanted? And the obvious answer is to make our local variable thread local. 
So if we do that, and then we compile, then we should get four. We get four, even though we are forcing our git here. So there you go. This is um, absolutely, completely useless. Something to keep in mind when you're thinking about the lifetime of objects. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.